Moved to Kentucky for fire service. By 10 square miles of hilly forest with home at an auction. Old owner lived there his whole life, died on the land, and family sold it to make a quick buck. Start planting more trees. Forest is dense, but could use some more around the house. Put up trail cams because of homeless wanderers coming onto property. Something is getting angry and ripping down trail cams from behind, including ones up high in trees. Find piles of them in tree hollows. Grab shotgun and camp supplies. Head out to find homeless man and persuade him to leave property. Can't find anyone. Only tiny four-toed prints in the mud by the streams. Think it's a raccoon, but the spacing makes me think it was standing up. Make camp and hunker down. Cook up some tasty rabbit stew. Get into tent and go to sleep before cleaning pot because of how tired I am. Wake up around 3 in the morning, moon shining through trees. Hear weird grunting noises from outside the tent. Sounds small. Open up window flat. Stew pot is swinging, but I can't see anything near it except for a mossy rock about the size of a gallon jug that I didn't notice before. Think nothing of it. Go back to sleep. Wake up. Go over to stew pot to cook some breakfast. Stew pot's been licked clean. Mossy rock is gone. Think that the raccoons must have cleaned it in the middle of the night, and the rock was the fat lump that did it. Pack up, search some more, and can't find anyone, but swear the moss around me is alive. Notice that the rocks seem to be moving whenever I look away from them. No sense of dread, just bewilderment. In the search somewhere, I lost my knife that I've had for a while. It's cheap, but it has a lot of sentimental value to me. Get home, tired and bummed out from not finding anyone and losing my knife. Go to sleep immediately. Wake up to light knocking at my door. Get up kinda groggy and open the door, eyeing where I keep my gun just in case. Peek through window. No one there. Grab shotgun, open door and poke my head through in case it was somebody visiting their new neighbor. No one. Only forest noises and the occasional butterfly. Step through door and feel my foot kick something. Look down. My knife is laying there on a small bed of flowers and grass. We'll look around, really confused but happy that someone found my knife, and then angry that somebody was on my property and watching me. Shout out as loud as I can a quick thanks, and if they're out there, to come see me so I can talk to them. Notice about three rocks, all around the size and shape of a milk jug, in a row, on the border of the forest. Pick up knife and walk back inside. Glance outside. Rocks are gone. Buy a border collie when I go to town that day. I have more stories about these things if anyone wants to hear about them. Okay. About a month later since finding my knife on my porch. Planting more trees, working some land to make a small garden. Pupper, named Hugo, is walking around, sniffing things, doing puppy stuff. While tilling, I notice two rocks on the edge of the forest. Think nothing of it. They don't bother me and I don't bother them. Kind of getting used to it and expecting them by now to be honest. I don't feel afraid. Hugo doesn't seem to mind them. Start getting really into my garden, lose track of time, and look up to find Hugo to take him inside with me for a break. Hugo gone. I'm freaking out because I love the little guy. Look around frantically and see him by the edge of the forest sniffing one of the rocks. The rock he's sniffing shifts a little when his nose gets too close to it. I get up to run over to Hugo to keep him from getting hurt or something in case the rock tips over on him. That's when I see the moss on the rock shift and sprout a tiny spindly little arm. I stop walking for a second and blink to make sure I'm not seeing something. It's hot and humid and I haven't been drinking as much water as I should. Arm continues to extend slowly and tentatively towards Hugo, recoiling a little whenever Hugo's nose touches it. I start back up, a little cautiously to not spook the rock thing. I'm getting nearer to Hugo, about 50 yards away, and see that it's petting Hugo's head. Hugo is wagging his tail and generally seems to be enjoying it. I get about 10 yards away when I step on a twig and make a loud noise. The creature's arm shoots back into its body and the rock starts tumbling frantically away. Hugo runs after them. I run after Hugo. I lose sight of Hugo and search for him until nightfall. I go back into my house to grab a flashlight and my camping gear to find my pupper. As I'm getting closer, I see a white and black lump on the porch. I start running towards my house and as I get closer I see that it's Hugo. He's laying on the porch, not moving. I'm getting more upset as I get closer. I see red and pink around his head and neck. I start sprinting, thinking my dog is hurt or dead. I get 10 feet away, about to bound up onto the porch when Hugo's head jerks up and looks at me. He stands up and comes to greet me with his slobbering mouth, clearly happy to see me. He has a little crown of red and pink flowers around his head and neck, and has a rope tied to his collar and my door. I hug him, 
Tears kind of well up because I've come to love this pupper so much. I stand up, shout a thank you to whoever brought him to me. Go in and go to sleep. I've been on this property for about four years now and have a lot more stories about them if people are still interested. I've gotten very close to them. I'm trying to build up my trust with the little things. About a year later, I keep seeing the rocks around my house, and they are getting closer and closer. Notice one is living in my garden now. Little different from the others, greenish gray and very round, almost spherical. Every now and then, I take a peek out the window and catch a glimpse of it moving around. Very slow and methodical. Garden has never looked more beautiful since it moved in. I go out to my garden often, and see it on the opposite side from me all the time. Decide one day to go up to it and try to show it I mean it no harm. I am unsuccessful at this, it just tucks its arms and legs in whenever it sees me. It looks like a chubby sloth carved out of stone, but no mouth or nose from what I can tell, just two beady little eyes. I decide to leave it alone, it seems to be helping me with the garden, and I appreciate that. Notice that sometimes some of my veggies will be gone or half eaten and sitting by the stone. Let it have them, leave some veggies near the edge of the forest. One day, notice the stone is gone, veggies are no longer being eaten and garden is looking a little worse for wear. Stones are gone from the tree line, I'm genuinely sad that they're gone. About two weeks later, I go into the forest looking for them. Come to the middle of my property where a massive tree has fallen, with some kind of oak, possibly around a hundred feet tall. When I get closer, I notice that there's dozens of the little stones on and around it, all leaning on it like they're kissing it or resting their heads on it. I'm overwhelmed with a sudden sense of sadness, almost like a family member died. I walk over to the tree and place my hand on it, whisper some sweet nothings to the stones. I go back home after spending almost three hours at the tree, feeling bereft of an old friend for some reason. Remember I have a white oak sapling in my yard outside my house. Dig it up and take it to the bigger oak in the forest the next day with Hugo. Plant it next to the fallen oak so that it will replace the giant hole the older one left. Hugo is walking around the stones, catch a glimpse of a few petting him. A few days later, notice the stones are back on the edge of the forest. Garden stone is back and everything looks lush and vibrant again. I have one other notable story that was kind of scary that I'll type out. I guess it's not really scary, but it does involve a crazy homeless guy. Go out into the forest one day with Hugo to look around for bums, say hi to some friends, and just to be outdoors. Notice more and more signs of a homeless person living here. Trash everywhere, broken branches and plants, etc. Finally make it to where I think the guy is camping. Find a shelter and take it down, but neatly fold it for him so he can get off my property quickly. Start to getting dark. I'm getting a little worried that I miss him or he's dead somewhere on my property. See someone moving deeper in the forest, shout to him to stop and talk to me. The guy has a pickaxe, so I keep my shotgun ready in case he gets violent. I see he's smashing something with it, freaking out, think I just stumbled onto a killing. That's when I hear the unmistakable sound of rocks being smashed. I fire into the air and get his attention damn quick. He drops his pickaxe and puts his hands up, mumbling something unintelligible. My adrenaline is pumping, I'm shaking, and Hugo is going mad on his leash. I scream at him about smashing the rocks. He starts saying how they were following him and throwing stuff at him. I almost shot him then and there, but instead, I led him at gunpoint to the edge of my property and told him to get out and never come back. A few days later, get a call from the sheriff's office about a body they found near my property. Homeless guy, beaten to death and stuffed into a tree tells me there will be a deputy coming to talk to me. Deputy shows up about an hour later, questions me if I had any interactions with the homeless guy. Tell him no, he starts to leave. Turns around on my porch and mentions my stone fence is a little low, but looks good. Look around and see the entire edge of the forest around my house is surrounded by stones. Tell him thanks and see him to his cruiser. He leaves, I look back at my house. All the stones are gone except for two. I've got a lot of small ones, like gifts and whatnot. They leave me flowers, sometimes moral mushrooms, things I've lost, etc. I've been giving them about a third of my veggies and they seem to like that. More and more show up in my yard rather than my tree line and only seem to move when they don't notice me there. They're very slow moving and the only time I've ever seen them move quickly is when they roll. I have a lot more animals in my area now and the forest and yard slash garden are much more lush and green when they are around. They seem to disappear during storms. 
I think they either go into tree hollows or potentially wait it out under other kinds of cover. The garden rock likes to go into a small covered trellis I built for it when the rain comes. Never heard them speak, and have only ever seen their faces a few times. It's just an oblong rock with black eyes that look like polished black glass. Very spindly arms and legs. Not bony looking, but more vine-like. They tuck back into the body and aren't noticeable. Four toes and three fingers and a thumb. Bodies are shaped like a bullet, and they are about the size of a gallon jug. The garden rock is more round, though. Their head sits on the front of the body rather than on top, and kind of blends into it. The eyes are wide-spaced, almost parallel to each other, and about the size of a small marble. They are covered in moss, and can range from green to burgundy. I think that might indicate age, but I don't know. When they stand up and walk, they look hunched over, and they tend to waddle more than just walk with arms out like they're carrying something under them. And then there's a little picture. Look at them little guys. Cute little forced stone sprite looking sons of bitches. There were a couple of things left in the house. Like some personal documents, mostly health records. Other than that, I know the guy came from Holland and that he built a house when he came over in the 50s. None of his family wanted the land, they just seemed to want to make some quick cash. I did let them spread his ashes in the forest though, because that's where, quote, he spent most of his time. With his wife, her ashes were also spread out there, according to their daughter. Seemed like a sweet old man. He liked woodcrafting, and I find some of his stuff here and there in the basement and in the shop. I left a figure out that he made on the porch, and the next day it was gone. Not sure if they took it or if it was some other animal slash vagrant passing through. Well guys, that, uh, that, that's pretty much all I got from this thread. Um, really hoped you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be kind to your woodland creatures, and apparently they'll be kind to you. And, uh, you know... We're all here on this magnificent blue marble together, so let's enjoy it while we're here. And as always, Ave Nex Olea!